So, uh, first of all, thanks for taking the time to do this. Of course, thanks for having me on. And um, how have you been finding living in this pandemic? Well, I, I've been trying to make the best of it. I've been trying to watch a lot of movies that I've wanted to watch for a long time. I've been writing a lot. Um, you know, I've, I took over CW Stargirl Instagram, which was pretty fun. I had something to right. do. You know, like I got to talk to my castmates and stuff like that. Um, you know, I was pretty happy to find out that uh, Stargirl Season 2 got, you know, picked up. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. And, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's not been too bad of a few, you know, months. So everything's slowly coming back to normal, but I've tried to make the best of it like that. You know, I've been watching a lot of shows and stuff. I started watching the Umbrella Academy, actually, which is great. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much all I've been doing. I've just kind of been doing stuff that I have wanted to do for a little while. Right. And um, as you were kind of telling me before I hit record, you're from Atlanta, which is where um, Stargirl's filmed. So how have you found experiencing this like huge shift in your life like right in your hometown well it's it was actually it was, it was a little easier than you know being out in LA or anything like that or also like yeah. you know to fly out and you know stay in an apartment and stuff like that uh so in Atlanta it was it was pretty it was relatively easy because you know like the first day it didn't, it didn't even feel like too much of a extravaganza uh because it was just it was just more like we I just you know drove like thirty minutes away to set and it was just really easy and I could sleep in my own bed and right. you know it was it was great because like everyone that I knew and that I loved on set was just you know so close so you know you could you know get get dinner you could hang out uh, and <clears throat> I, I do love L A and I can't wait to get back out there but just from a filming a, a TV show or a film perspective I think it's uh, better to be like you know in your hometown or just wherever is more convenient to you sure. And um, over the past uh, 13 weeks, the fans have been getting to know Mike Dugan. Uh, and how different do you think he is to Trey Romano in, in real life? Well, I, I think, the, you know, there's some big similarities, but there's also some big differences. But uh, I think Mike, Mike is probably, I think he's a lot more hyper version of me. Uh, I'm a little sure. probably more laid back, but... Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm always eating. I know that that's, that's probably a big thing, but, um, just, I, I think, I think it's almost like an alter ego, maybe More, not, right. not as much like, like, like complete similarities, but very, very much just like alter ego kind of, um, kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was just, it was just pretty easy to play because, you know, Mike, like I, I didn't really like, you know, like with, um, the gambler in the show played by the Eric Goins, uh, he, was you know he had this amazing like soupy like southern accent that he put on mm. for this you know for this character and I, I didn't really have anything you, you know like like too drastic to, you know to like put on for my character I was just kind of like you know being me and maybe just like going along with the lines a little bit more to be a little more you know animated or energetic and stuff like that but you know later on the season Mike kind of gets a little more uh, Mike's writing kind of gets a little more like dramatic and a little bit more emotional. <laughs> And that's kind of where I tied in more with him because it was a lot more, you know, like laid back and it wasn't as, you know, pressing joke here, joke here. You know, it was, it was a lot more, uh, a lot more, um, I, I don't know, just a lot more similar to me, I guess. So, and that, that was with like the rest of the cast too, you know, like well, everyone in like the family, like in the Dugan family and the Whitmore family, stuff like that. We all pretty much didn't really have to do anything because we were all kind of just playing our roles and what they would be in life. It's like, you know, like Luke was the dad and Amy was the mom. I was, you know, the, the stepbrother. So it was just everything was relatively easy working with all those, you know, great people. Of course, you know, like I said, later in the season, we did a lot more stuff. But yeah, so um, I guess I guess there was a lot of similarities and it was, you know, for everyone, it was it was a pretty, pretty genuine um, thing to work on. Right. And um I mean, you were kind of mentioning at the at the end of the season, but kind of to go the opposite direction back to the very beginning in the pilot, uh, Mike was very opposed to, to the idea of moving to Blue Valley. So how much uh, would you say his opinion about the town has changed across 13 episodes? Well, I I think, you know, <clears throat> even even in the writing, it kind of touched on that a little bit when he was talking about his friend, Jakeem, you know, mm. Uh, and the comics, you know, like all that stuff. So I, I think, I think um, that 
just based off like the writing and what I've read, and I think Mike definitely has taken a liking to it. He has a lot of friends. He has, you know, a paper route he's doing. Um, I think the only the only thing kind of thing was that he was probably associating this town with you know not being with his dad, and it only got worse as the season went on. But in the last few episodes, we're like, oh, I'm kind of involved in something pretty cool. So it was. Uh, I, I think I think it was kind of a shift. I, I, it, it was like a lot of the things that probably happened with Mike to you know make make how he ends up in the last few episodes how he is. But I think um, yeah that I. It's definitely a very big change from the beginning because the beginning he completely opposed it. It actually only took a little while for him to be a little more excited about it. Like that first uh, dinner scene was like, "Yeah, bro, like I, I got all these uh, friends now. I'm gonna sure. go play blah, blah blah stuff like that." And yeah, I, I I think Mike is definitely settled down. He's becoming more mature and he's ready to help. Right. And um, when he first signed on for the role. How much did you know about Mike's uh, season one arc, did you, or did you like to find everything out episode by episode? Well, actually, uh, it was it was all it was it was one thirteen episode contract. It was a uh, it was just all at the same time. And actually, I called uh, the uh, showrunner and the creator Jeff Johns. Mm. Actually, I, I called with him, and he didn't even he didn't as much tell me what the story arc for Mike season one was, he really told me what the story arc for Mike season two was. And right. that was you know, very interesting, the stuff that he has planned. Uh, and also, of course, you know, um, the thing with Jeff is that on set stuff ebbs and flows, you know? So I remember Breck was telling me, I didn't even know this, but Breck was telling me that, you know, um, that my, my character arc for season two was originally like kind of set in stone, like what I had heard, but the way I played Mike, it, it was, it was, it was, you know, like different than how um, it was, you know, kind of written. So wow. uh, it was, so they kind of, we kind of changed, well, not me, but <laughs> Jeff mm. kind of changed the, uh, the arc a little bit in season two when some more stuff is, you know, happening because it was such an open set that we could really kind of do whatever we wanted. It was very creative. So if you like had a scene idea, then you could, you know, write it and you could do it like, with me and Luke, we went to dinner one night and we wrote this scene, and the next day we showed it to Jeff, and he actually let us shoot it, which is like you know really interesting. It didn't end up getting in the you know the final cut, but, oh, right. but uh, yeah, but you know maybe in like the Blu-ray version, I don't know, we'll see. But um, yeah, so it was just it was very open, and the cool part about this show is that there, there's so many facets that can like that the story can like go down i guess like there's right. it's a multifaceted show so with mike there's no telling what he's really going to be doing in season two but um I, I i think i know but i probably don't so it's yeah so season one i wasn't really informed on but season two they they have some big plans right and um you kind of gave me a segue there with part of what you just said but uh so luke wilson plays your on-screen father in the show and I was wondering, did you guys have any discussion about what uh, Pat and Mike's lives could have been like before uh, they met Barbara and Courtney? That's a great question. Yeah, actually, we we did because we we even worked that into the pilot a little bit. Like when that that scene was when um, it's like the first scene that you really see Mike uh, right. and, and Pat, you know, kind of hanging out. And it's it's when they get out at the apartment in Valley Village, and Mike's like, "I thought you said that." You know, once you got married to Barbara, you'd stop moving around, and like that—that that was kind of like a little like a tie back. You know, like when they mm. were kind of on the road, and they were they were they were you know just them for a long time, uh, and you know, it was kind of kind of interesting hearing that because with uh it it really does like tell you a lot about their their relationship, not right. as much even father or son, but almost kind of like pals, you know. So it's 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 this really uh it's this different dynamic this different relationship and yeah Luke and I talked about it a lot you know like that actually that we that we brought that up a lot of times before we went to a scene we were like hey like maybe we could add this here because you know like they were on the road together like they like they know each other so well like they didn't, like know each other so well and it's just like it, it kind of did tie into a lot of like uh parts of the show so. Mm. Um, it was very much an underlying factor in even like how we decided to play our roles. So that um, 
that's yeah it's a great question right and um kind of like on a similar tangent so there was a flashback of pat and barbara meeting um in blue valley uh, but how do you think mike and courtney's first meeting went because obviously it hasn't been shown but like how, how do you think that that went down i honestly probably don't think there was much that, actually you know what i do know actually what their first um encounter was like because i actually um in the comics the the first the first encounter was kind of like Mike just said something smart because she, she my, like uh, Courtney walks in. She's like, who's this? And she's like, uh, it, no, she's like, uh, are you my brother? And I was like, stepbrother, mm. technically miss. And I always speak in technicals. Like that was like the first line that Mike had in the right. comic. That was just so funny and so cool. But uh, that that's I, I guess that's kind of how they would have interacted. I guess that's probably how the first meeting would have gone. And they in the comics, they both kind of bonded on knowing about the JSA, but clearly in the show, they mm -hmm. kind of broke a lot of those uh, boundaries and they... Yeah. It's they, an interpretation they, of it. Yeah, yeah, so it's an interpretation of it, and, you know, Mike, of course, in the show, doesn't know until later on. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that that's Mike Mike and Mike and Courtney's first, first encounter. I would have loved to have seen that on screen, but, you know, we still got the comics, so that's pretty good, I guess. Right, <laughs> yeah. And um, so Stargirl's depicted um, relatable human themes like a blended family against the backdrop of being a superhero show. And how much do you think that's helped um, the show having a, a wide appeal to uh, an audience? I think it's it's helped our chances of getting a season two and even a season three, of course, because... Mm. There's so many people across the world that are watching it. And, you know, like my, my father and my mother like the show, like mm. aside from even being in it, they just like the scenes with like, you know, Luke and, and Amy and all that stuff because they that's like, you know, their their age group. They they tune in because they like that aspect of it. And, you know, there's probably some middle aged height, like middle aged, um, you know, like people tuning in, like I said, with their children and family. And, you know, like the kids, you know, they say they, they see me and they like the high schoolers see Breck and Hunter and, you know, all those wonderful people on sure. like the say side. So it, it kind of resonates with everyone, I think. And that's why it's been so lovable, perhaps. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty much it, because it's just it's it's a very um it's a show that everyone can watch. Like, you can really sit down with anyone and watch it. Yeah. And um, just to kind of preface this question, it's like a bit of a off-the-wall kind of one. But um, So imagine if there was ever, like, a circumstance where a villain could switch people's, like, consciousness around. So you're playing a different character in, <laughs> Mike's, in, in Mike's body. Who, who would you want that to be in that kind of situation? I honestly want to play... I would probably want to play Luke because... Right. Luke, Luke and Mike are already pretty similar in some in mm. some ways, in some ways they're not. But I just think that would be funny to see the stuff that Mike would have access to. You know, like like he could he could have the access to Stripe, and he could be in the Stripe robot doing stuff, and like he could be talking on like the comm and just saying stupid stuff. That would be so fun, honestly. Because uh, I I just think and if if Pat was actually Mike. Mm. Pat, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be really funny. I think that would be a, a funny swap. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like laughing at someone maybe like missing a couple of episodes and just turning that one on and being like, "What is happening?" Like, does yeah. it make no sense? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so after being uh, sidelined for most of the season, uh, Mike has his moment in episode 13. Obviously, I'm not going to specify what that is in case people aren't caught up, but. As the actor playing him, how satisfied do you think he felt doing what he did? I think he felt a little too, too satisfied. You know, he's he's mm. a. It was it was it was a little creepy. You know how he had a smile on his face the whole time. Right. Uh, but that kind of gives us a little insight of you know like maybe season two plans like the rest of the rest of the show and the rest of the series because you know Mike um, he's he's not just. He's not just like the the bubbly kid, you know. He's he's kind of got a dark side, I, I, I guess. So that I mean, I, I think I think that was really cool, and I think that even that small scene, even though it was very important, 
it was still very small. It opened up a lot of doors, you know, mm. uh, just like um, future seasons. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if Mike's going to be a uh, – oh, God. I don't know if, if Mike's going to be like a – a hero or like a ruthless villain there's like uh, it, it, there's no telling you know if, if i was a betting man i'd probably say he would just be like a rogue agent you know like out for hire i think that would be pretty cool um yeah but uh that's yeah that's it, it was it was really cool to play that and it was it's going to be really cool to see what you know the creators do with that right and i think it's probably like the way they intended it because and like it's like i mean this in the best way possible i don't think people would have seen that scenario happening, you know, if that makes sense. I think, yeah. you know, that, that's kind of the way they set it up because you don't really know who it is that's coming and then, yeah, they, kind of, the, then the, they kind of reveal it. Everyone was so surprised when they saw that, like when they, and it, it was, it, it really set it up like a way like that the JSA almost had to feel reliant on Mike for a little bit. Mm. You know, it was like, it was like they, they were, you know, about to get almost killed by Icicle. And then right. Mike just comes in and he just almost saves the day. So I, yeah. I think, that like, that even since it was so surprised, it was almost like a little bit of like respect from all of them for Mike. But uh, I, yeah, it, it was just it was just really a. Uh, in my opinion, it was just a really, it was, it was a really good way to shoot it. You know, Greg Beeman, the person who should, uh, directed that episode, it was just a it was just a good choice to reveal it that way because I think it had as much impact on a lot of things. So I even saw some videos from uh, my family, friends, and some fans that were videotaping it while they were watching it. And they saw him, like, Icicle about to kill him, and they saw saw me come up behind him. And that was uh, that was really cool to just, like, see people, like, really excited about that, you know? So that was, yeah, that was just really cool. Mm. Yeah, um... No pun intended, though, obviously, considering who you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, besides uh, Stargirl, do you have any other projects or, like, interests in the background at all? Or... Yeah, no, I, there's, I'm, I'm always, you know, looking for projects. There's, there's a few things. Well, there's, there, there's always, there's always, um, you know, a, a few things kind of circulating with actors that, you know, might, this might happen, this might happen, but you never know. There's just, there's never a solid answer, but, mm. um, but, you know, clearly for right now, we're in the middle of a pandemic and it's proving, it's, it's proving to be a little bit difficult with just the industry in general. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm just happy to see what's going to, you know, like go on after the pandemic and everything like that. I got a lot of friends in LA that are uh, doing movies that are doing projects that want me to like, you know, like, you know, see, see what they're doing, like, and be on set and stuff cool like that. So, uh, it's, it's just, I'm just glad that hopefully this is going to be over soon and we can start filming Stargirl. And, you know, like I said, I could, you know, go back to LA and, you know, see what my friends are doing. So, uh, but other than that, you know, I'm, I'm a writer. I actually just finished my first, like really feature length script which was yeah really exciting um and i, I saw that, you mentioned that on instagram just before i i did the school so that's kind of yeah yeah weird, yeah, weird it, time it, there, yeah yeah it is uh but yeah I, I just i just finished my script of i would probably say nine months that i've uh, been writing it's a very out there script you know like mm. my my favorite like directors are Wes Anderson, Taika Waititi, John Favreau, stuff like that. So it's they're kind of they're they're all unique visionary like directors, and that's you know who really kind of inspired me. I probably can't do it like them justice, of course, but you know um, that's that's yeah, kind of what inspired me to write and stuff like that. So yeah, it was it was pretty pretty interesting. Uh, just you know just writing that and being able to. Uh, actually just sit down and finish it because I kind of had a dry spell of not writing because writing like it's writing is a very interesting thing because writers hate writing you know it's right like, um, yeah 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 it's just like you, you hate hate having to sit down and actually physically write the words that's just the worst mm. thing so I, you know I, I take as long as possible to have all the you know like the scenes laid out and everything like that to really make it um, you know, make it as good as possible. So that's, 
You know, it's, uh, that's, that's really like, that was really exciting for me. It's also, of course, aside from the star girl getting renewed and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, I, there's, there's some projects hopefully down the pipeline for Mr. Mike. Probably there's, there's one that might be going on after actually season two even get, gets released in 2021, which mm. would be really cool. Um, and yeah, I'm just, you know, thankful for everything that I've got going on right now. Right. And uh, so this is, um, the last question I've got here, uh, what would you like to say to um, the fans who've watched the past 13 weeks of Stargo? I just want to probably say that just thank you. You made this all possible for getting a season two. And you're, you know, you know it's interesting with the show and castmates because, you know, when, when you have when you have friends that you're hanging out with on set and stuff like that, um, when you're on a show, you're, you're almost your friendship and your camaraderie is not even um you know confirmed for another year which is like mm. so it's like it's it's a really weird feeling you know and for for them to have such great response to it and let us do what we did last year with all of our great friends uh is just really special and that's you have no idea how much you mean to us just for that reason alone just mm. so you you know they 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 let us be, do this again and we're doing this you know for you for the fans and for the you know the the people that have been watching this and reading the comics since day one, so you know the, the only thing I can really say is I I hope like you know we didn't disappoint in season one and you know I hope that it, we stay true to you know the essence of the comics and I just you know thank you again for for just letting us do this again. <laughs>